Well, it is the Hardball Gets AFL show, the quick nine for another week. My name's Chris Robinson. I'm joined firstly in studio by Jackson Barrett. Jacko, how are you, bud? Good, mate. How are you? I'm very well. And joining us again from Melbourne, I want to ask if you got an invite. Just managed to finagle an invite to the uh, Hall of Fame dinner last night. Jake Colvin, how'd you, how'd you go last night? Did you get there? Uh, unfortunately, my invite got lost in the mail just due to relocating <laughs> the dresses, so it didn't, didn't come through. But uh, tell you what, Robert, I've never been colder than I uh, this morning. It was two degrees at about eight o'clock, um, and shorts was a very, very, very <laughs> bad choice. Talk us I, through I the haven't really talk us through the decision making. Like, what, what's well, the upside on the shorts? Well, I just I wanted to go for a stroll and grab a coffee up the road. There's a, there's many um, many coffee shops on the on the Great Bridge Road, very famous sort of strip in Richmond. Mm-hmm. And I walked up that way with uh, and I just chucked my shorts on. And um, yep, I immediately regretted that about fifty meters down the road. Have, so have you settled on a regular yet? Um, there is a few, mate. Yeah, but I'm I'm just trying to become uh, at one with Melbourne and just try and uh, try a few different ones. Bit of uh, bit Jacko. of Justin Langer grounding maybe. Yeah, Have maybe a potentially. Just really familiarise yourself with the... Yeah, the, yep, yep. If I want to get sick very quickly, road pavement. I, I might do that. Yep. Um, so, uh, no, but it's good to be back. What did you guys love about the, the Hall of Fame stuff last night? I thought Swanee was outstanding. It was always going to be good. a little bit different. It was always going to be yeah. dressed a little bit different. But um, I thought the Mick Malthouse pre-amble was fantastic. Um, and then Swanee just sort of did himself justice with the... He's just different but great different yeah swanee was always going to be good and reading a couple of stories it sounds like obviously it was a good it was a great speech but it sounds like pretty good presser afterwards as well and mm-hmm. some good stories yep. and uh i'm sure a, a pretty quiet night for the rat pack who were all there so swanee had three tables yeah. so you get yeah, hall of fame inductees get, in the entourage hall of fame inductees get one table and he <laughs> said yeah yep all good i'll just take two more um so big yeah, big Dane Swan entourage. The Rat Pack boys were there. I'm sure they had a couple of quiet reds and, and wandered on home. What do you reckon, Jake? I think people were quicker to forget about Dane Swan. Like, uh, like he really, like he does a lot of stuff with, um, uh, like, a few ads and stuff and, and partnerships. But I think as a player, um, I feel like the AFL community has moved on from him pretty quick. Um, well, I get the feeling anyway because of just, I guess, how talented the league is now. But Pete Dane Swan, especially for fantasy managers mm-hmm. out there, would have remembered just, you know, set and forget captain every single week. But um, he was just a, the original pig, I think he yeah. uh, he was um, on the footy field. But um, fantastic player at his peak. Some of those Anzac days as well were yep. outrageous. Always turned it on. Man for the man for the big occasion. Um, I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter, but there's always just a very, and it might be the people that I follow, but there's always just a very, very, very small portion on Hall of Fame night who make the same case every year that Sav Rocker should be in there. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have seen that. So basically, he's 16th on the all-time VFL, AFL goal kickers list. He's the only person in the top 29 on that list who's eligible and not in the Hall of Fame. Jake, can you make a case for Big Sav going in? Oh, Ten, where, where ten-time he... leading goal kicker at his at uh, across Collingwood and North Melbourne. Well, Collingwood and North Melbourne, yeah. So probably more famously known at Collingwood mm-hmm. rather than I think he spent a few years at North towards the back end of his career. Um, look, he was. It's funny back then how much further uh, forwards could kick the footy, um, just because they're big, burly. Um, they got you know quads like tree trunks, and they could boot at sixty meter set shots, no problem. I think Sab and Anthony, his brother, were two of probably the. The artists at doing that. Um, there's just so many good forwards, isn't there? Um, I don't. I'm not saying he doesn't have a case, but um, you'd probably think with that sort of resume, he probably should have been recognised by now. Um, but certainly, it's not not keeping me up at night. I think one of the people making the case on Twitter worked out that between the inductees, they had pipped Savrocker for goals. <laughs> All inductees, VFL, AFL goals, had pipped Savrocker by six. Yeah. Kelvin Templeton had uh, most of those. I feel like looking back at your point about just booting it a hell of a long way, Jake, Sav was one of my first favourite players as a kid because obviously big bulking forward and could kick it a long way. Even when you look back at those highlights now, you know because the goalposts were shorter back in those eras, yeah. it, it kind of looks like yeah, when true. they boot it, it kind of dwarfs the goal. It's just like, oh, wow, that's just sailed over the top. Like it's a bit different to how it is now. So, um Yeah, we'd love to see Big Sav get a mention. Um, We've got to give a shout-out, guys, off the top to our man, Will Costa, who was mentioned in the Mailbag episode yesterday, um, earlier in the week, with Rhino and Zave and Nick Rin. 
um, who came to the party on the obscure Players Cup thing that we kind of tapped into last, last week, week and, yeah. and got a bit of good feedback. Um, so Ilya Grigic was just an amazing shout out coming for the West Coast Essendon game this That's week dead. for those that didn't hear it. I'd somehow Huge. raced in my mind that Ilya Grigic had played two games for Essendon after he finished obviously a very respectable career at uh, West Coast and the Dogs before that. But um, to our man, Will Costa, mate, thanks for listening and keep him coming and we'll certainly have some more fun with those this week, Jacko. Yeah, so should we work through Will's as we go through ours today? Yeah. Do we want to do uh, that? Do you have a, do you have a pre, pre-done list of yours? No, no, I've got a few in mind, okay. but I haven't written it down. Just, I'm just not off a, the cuff? Hey, I'm not enough. I've yet. written That's them good. down, Jacko, because you have? I, yeah, I find of course. Yeah. this show, mate. I take it seriously. Jack spent like, three yeah. hours research going to yep. this. All right, well, should we kick it off with the first game then? So it is Friday night footy. It's a good one for Friday night footy this week. Carlton up against Geelong. Now, Will Costa called this the Jeremy Labler Cup, which is nice. It's got a bit of Sydney in there as well, obviously. Um, Jacko, Jake, what do you guys like for this this cup before we actually talk about the game? Zach Tui is the live one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got Darcy Lang. Darcy yeah, Lang, that's, that's so I obscure. I win. I yep. win that. My, yeah. my one's not as obscure, but Justin Murphy, I love the fact that he went mm. from, let me think about Essendon this. as well. He went yeah. from Carlton to Geelong for one season and then got traded back straight away to play under the same coach that he had a falling out with in Wayne Britton, which is unbelievable. Jack um, Armstrong move. I love that. Um, yeah, what do we like, guys? The so Carlton obviously rolling fairly nicely. Geelong get a few backs. So a danger's coming back by the sounds. Ollie Henry, Toby Conway... Give him a bit of a boost, but um, Carlton, Jacko, ticking along very nicely. Yeah, I'd pretty happily take Carlton here. I think if Danger and Toby Conway play, that's the best version of Geelong's midfield. So that, Or a better version of Geelong's mm, midfield. So they that, need that. That excites me a little bit. They just need that kind of danger field burst and hopefully after a few weeks off he's um he's kind of fit and firing and and we can see a little bit of that because that's what they've been lacking recently so i i'd be more confident in geelong making a a real game of this if both of those guys play otherwise it's kind of hard to look past carlton at the moment um they really are rolling i love what they're doing with chincotta the big fords of course are, are flying at the moment so i'll take carlton yeah, I'll be heading with Carlton as well. Um, McGovern and Wiedering are both going to be uh, getting up and they'll be available to play as well, which is huge for them um, going up against um, one of the better forward lines. It'll be interesting to see if Jeremy Cameron plays more forward um, this week, which you'd think would be the smart move um, from Chris Scott. But um, I'm going to this game, so I'm hoping it's a, it's a ripper. Um, but I'm going Carlton um, quite comfortably, I think. Yeah, I'll take the Blues as well. The kind of game that maybe previously they might have uh, tripped up on. I think there's a bit more trust factor about the Blues now. The first game on Saturday, Port Adelaide against Brisbane. Obviously, the 2004 grand final rematch. Um, Aaron Shattuck was the shout-out from our man, Will Costa, which is so good. Guy who played in a grand, won a grand final with Brisbane and didn't touch the football, which is pretty amazing. Um, Zach Butters got cleared, Jake, which I'm sure you'd be very, very excited about. Went to the tribunal and won. How important is it to have that midfield ready to lock and load against a Brisbane side that's starting to rediscover something now? Well, it's it's kind of funny that now that they've got all their midfielders back, um, one's almost got to suffer um, at times too. Like you, you saw Rosie played, um, still played on ball, but he played a little bit forward. So did Butters, so did Horn Francis. Wines played uh, a lot of centre bounces as he should. But I, I think when one's out, it just allows them to all... Uh, go into the mix but now Ken Hinckley's got the problem which I I raised um, a couple of months ago on this show about he's got to figure out what he wants to do with wines and, and, and that you, means and you called for wines being a horses for courses kind of policy do you, do you still think that's the case and do you think he's the one who gets squeezed still oh it, it's it's hard because Horn Francis is best on the weekend he, he had a pretty average game mm. um, as a whole um, and, I, and I hate taking him out of the midfield and putting him forward but he does look so good when he is forward. So I think to stretch Brisbane, um, potentially Ken's going to have to look at playing Wines more on ball and, and maybe giving Rosie and, and Horn Francis slightly longer spurts um, in the forward half. But I wasn't impressed with their second half against GWS. Mm. Um, and this is going to go down to the wire. This will be a really close game. Jake, what does the key forward situation look like? Obviously, drop Dixon, who's now been banned, and then Lord comes in and he's subbed off. Where do they sort of sit there now? Uh, look, Lord, for me, I think he's still a project player, but he has looked really good, as I said last week. Those finals he played last year was sort of coming of age for him. Um, he's still really young. I think finlayson has been a little bit too inconsistent for mine, but I think it all starts from, from that midfield mix. They weren't that good on the weekend. Butters got tagged out by Bedford. 
Rosie's only just come back from a um, an ankle. Uh, Rioli really um, gives good shape and, and danger to that forward line too. Without Rioli, like McKenzie's not a goal kicker, um, and the smalls like Darcy Ben Jones might be good for a goal, but he's not really that threatening. He's more of a defensive forward. So I think a lot of it um, actually comes down to Willy Rioli's availability um, to to give those talls something to bring the ball down to. Yeah, George, Georgiades did some nice things on the weekend mm. too. Oh, All he right. looked great. He looked great. Which way are you leaning, Jacko? Uh, leaning port, but I liked what Brisbane did yeah, on the I, weekend. I think so. I'm Brisbane just, okay. but again, this is a coin flip oh. game. Um, sorry, Jake, don't hate me. Uh, GWS and Sydney meet again um, in the Sydney Derby. So we saw some good things from the Giants last week against your boys, Jake. Josh Kelly back, obviously straightens them up a fair bit through the middle. Um I went back and had a look at the first derby or the first, uh, what do they call it? Battle of the Bridge, Battle whatever the this bridge, game is, yeah. um, from not that long ago because the fixture is weird. Um, and James Jordan did a really good lockdown on Lockie Whitfield, held him to just 19. He's averaging yep. 29 per season. And also a common theme for Sydney this season, scores and goals out of their midfield. So the last time they, these guys played, Warner had 28 in a goal. Haney had 26 in a goal. Errol had 29 and a goal, and James Rowbottom had 21 and two goals. So if you get that yeah. kind of scoring out of that midfield, this team is very, very hard to stop. It was only a few weeks ago, but the Swans' win over the Giants last time was, I felt, the one where it was like, okay, these guys can Defining. really put yeah. their foot down. Yeah. Like I think JWS, I don't know if they were unbeaten. They were either unbeaten or had only dropped one or two mm -hmm. coming in. They were like premiership favourites, and Sydney put their foot down against them. The goal-scoring mids is, I think, at the moment, like the end, the absolute envy of the competition. Yeah. You talk about sides like Fremantle and um, Richmond and, and a heap of sides where one of the problems that's ID'd is goal-scoring mids, and these guys have three of them. They're incredible. We've spoken a, a heap about them. Um, I think Jordan will definitely go to Whitfield. It's been something that's worked incredibly well. 100%. Um, it leaves a big, big day for guys like Lockie Ash and I think Josh Kelly coming back is super super important mm. just to have that kind of class on the outside they've got like the bulls in there that can go and win the footy but for the for the few weeks that Kelly was out it felt like they were missing that like deliverer inside 50 like once they extract it who's it going to and you're a lot more confident with it in Josh Kelly's hands. Jake do the Swans keep rolling? Uh, I think so, um, but there would be a major matchup between. You'd think they'd go with Bedford trying to tag again potentially. It worked really well on Butters. You'd think he'd go to Warner. Um, I, I think Heaney's probably a bit too big for for Bedford um, size wise. So um, I think he'd go straight to Warner. But I, I'm going with Sydney. Uh, it's going to be tough though. I think the interesting thing there is Warner's going to be able to take Bedford. Uh, Bedford's an elite runner, but Warner's going to be able to take him to places he doesn't want to go. Mm. He's going to be able to mark forward of the ball. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they if they do. Yeah, and obviously depends on the tag art. Now that tagging's a bit more in vogue, but we'll see. You know, the question we've been asking about Warner, Heaney or Errol, like which one is more important? Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to get some some answers to those questions as far as taggers go. I'll take the Swans to keep rocking and rolling as well. Taylor Adams Cup as well. Taylor Adams Cup, very good. He went the long way around, but he got there. Um, Melbourne and North Melbourne. So our guy, Will Costa, this was the Cam Pedersen Cup, which is an elite reference. And this is 100% the only podcast this week where Cam yep. Pedersen's name will get a reference. Uh, do and you guys from, have any contributions? From footy grid, I remember this being a really hard Melbourne and North? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I've like got one. Ben Brown? Ben Brown, yep. A bit more common. No. Yep. Jordan Gisbert's. Jordan Gisbert's. Yeah, good. How many games did Jordan Gisbert's play at North? I uh, didn't go on his wiki, but I just <laughs> remember that from um, time to time. Yeah, weirdly didn't go to his wiki account, but uh, I've known that off the top of my head. So, um, um, so, so, Jake, is this any sort of tripwire game for Melbourne? Because these two teams appear to be heading in slightly different directions, as we know. Petrarca's gone down. Jake Lever's still not back. And then we saw North show some signs of life over the past couple of weeks. Can you make a case for the Roos? Every time I've tried to make a case for North Melbourne being threatening, um, they've just thrown in a, a really bad performance, which is, which is not a shock. But um, no, I, I think this is the kind of game that like, it's lucky Melbourne get North at, at this time. Um, Will Phillips did a really good job on Dacos until he was bizarrely subbed. Mm -hmm. um, you'd think Will Phillips goes to like would he go to Clary like I don't, is, is he that taggable at the moment Clary like what I don't know I wonder, if, I, wonder I don't know if Clary it. is doing enough damage to be mm. worth sac like we talk all the time about you sacrifice the 23rd player and you're the 22nd player on ground for the best for their best but I don't know if Clary's that damaging yeah I don't know if there is anyone you need to tag and you have to worry no, you like, have to wonder about that mix as well point. because Phillips was the late in right for yeah. Simpkins so if you assume Simpkins back 
then does it shuffle things around? Yeah, so unless I think it's like, like a, a, might not see a tag. Unless it's like a shields that falls out or something. Mm. But yeah, I'd, I probably wouldn't. I think Melbourne need to find something else in their midfield. It'll be a bit more cosy like we've seen over the last couple, but is it like a Trent Rivers? Like they just need to find that mix in there and without Petrarca, it's getting more dire. Yeah, well, they're, they're dropping like flies. We were sort of talking about this a couple of days ago with a mate in terms of that midfield that just torched the Bulldogs in the 2021 yeah. GF. Luke Jackson's obviously not there anymore. Trark's gone down. Clary's not quite the same. Brayshaw's had to retire. All of a sudden, there's a lot of heavy lifting for someone like a Jack Viney in there. Are we all happy? Maybe happy is not the right word, but we're all picking Melbourne here. Content. Yeah, yeah I'm Melbourne. content with yeah. Melbourne. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sunday is Essendon hosting West Coast, another game between teams that only played about seven or eight weeks ago. Um, and shout out to Michael Pryor, the Michael Pryor Cup for this yeah, one. You guys, you guys got anything you want to uh, toss in? Derek Kickett. Derek Kickett. Derek yeah, Kickett? Played. Dale Kickett. Yeah, Derek. Uh, no, Don't Derek Kickett Dale. played for Essendon. I think he played a couple of games. Derek didn't get to West Dale. Coast. I think you're thinking of Dale. I had Michael um, Pryor. Michael Pryor is a great yeah. one. Yeah. Um, Jacko, I might ask you, because you've been across West Coast um, this week, in terms of what the forward setup looks like now. So we're assuming Oscar Allen is going yeah, to come Oscar back. Play, yeah. Obviously, Very Jake Waterman is up and about. What does it mean for a third tall in terms of Jack Darling? What does it mean for Bailey Williams? Is, is he going to be still the backup ruck? And if he is, yeah. is there a spot for Jack Darling? How do you sort of... I, I get the impression that Williams needs to play. Um, I agree. So I think it's Flynn and Williams. Williams, you know, 70-30. Williams resting mm -hmm. forward. I think it's crunch time for Jack Darling. He had a good first quarter against North Melbourne. I liked his work rate. And then he barely touched it after that. And he <clears throat> ended up being pretty disappointing. Yeah. So it's not an Adam Simpson-like decision to make to drop Jack Darling. He's stuck fat with his 2018 guys. Gaff forced his hand by having four disposals. Sure. Uh, and I, it'll be interesting to see if Darling has got to that point yet where there just isn't any other way around it. But um, Waterman has to play. Allen, I'm pretty He's confident, will come plays, back. Yeah. He, he plays. So, I don't know. They, do they try and squeeze all of them in? I feel like the West Coast thing to do would be let's see what it looks yeah. like and, I, I, they'll, and they'll back in all of them yeah. and then if it goes bad this week then maybe that's where darling gets squeezed i in. i agree i think that's probably what they'll do and then i think they've got options there so um we had a journal mitch woodcock at their training on saturday ryan marrick has spent a little bit of time in the midfield the group. Guts, yep. so i think they're going to try and utilize him kind of like a wing he's a good field kick it looks like he's got a, a pretty decent tank so whether he's that like up the ground guy and then that jack hutchinson debut you'd imagine he's probably the first one to come yeah, out definitely but he's also like flew for his marks um he obviously didn't quite understand the system clearly but flew for his marks it looks like he can kick a footy i wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being an option for that sort of like mid-sized tall as well i feel like that's the better balance alan waterman the resting ruck and a mid-sizer. Jake, Essendon have any problems here or are they okay? No, nah, no no problems. I would actually like to see uh, Hutchison go back. Um, he's got some versatility playing mm. at both ends of the ground. I yep. actually think Hutchison could be a good call to play as like sort of a third or maybe fourth um, defender in that back line. Just too. do a bit so of an education watch. under uh, Gov back there. Um, yep. And the final game of the round, Frio hosting Gold Coast on Sunday afternoon. Jacko? And man, Will was going with Brandon Material, which is good. Yeah. I thought Greg Broughton. Greg Broughton is great. Yeah. Was a favourite of mine. Greg Broughton. I guess the story coming in here is Gold Coast's horrendous away record, right? So 13 winless on the road, but they're unbeaten this season between the Gold Coast and... Darwin, Rob, you've got a story up on on the West this morning. Yeah, this is a, a bizarre, bizarre case of the like the road sickness, really. Um, so you'd you'd back Fremantle here, but I'm fascinated by the Gold Coast this week because mm. the everything's there when they're at home, and it just turns to water away. Yeah, I mean, you could make it. Oh, I'll go to you, Jake, because we missed you out in the last one. What are you What are you looking for in this game? Do you think Freo bounce back? Well, it's another false dawn really isn't it by by Fremantle as soon as everyone backs in the pressure's on for them to win mm. they just uh, they went to water the, but, the trust factor um, for both of these teams is low right it is low very low but it, look Freo at home it's hard to go past them but Ben King got hurt at training um, uh, earlier this week I think or mm. uh, late last week uh, I think there's still some scans to see if he's going to be available this week um, from what I was reading but it does probably sound like that because they're doing this trip across um, Australia probably 
maybe won't play with him um, if he's kind of under any injury cloud. I'd assume they'd, they'd err on the side of caution there. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'd love to see Gold Coast get this win, but I just can't. Like the, the, the logical tipper in me, Robbo, will, will go straight to Freo. I wouldn't love to see Gold Coast get this win. Freo <laughs> desperately, desperately need to take care of this at home, and I'm, I'm fairly confident they will. Every time questions have been asked to their midfield, mm. um, they've kind of answered them, and I think they'll probably do it again here. Um, Stop being so biased, Jacko. Yeah, like, yeah I mean, no, like, you're right. I'm the only Sorry. one that's allowed to be biased in this pod. Like, I'm usually pretty even with these sort of things, mate, so it's um, just a I f- warning. I feel like there hasn't been much talk about Will Powell this week, yep. who's a WA boy, served a five-game suspension for using a homophobic slur. He's available to return in this game. Jacko, do you think, first of all, do you think they go straight back to him as opposed to do a one or two in the VFL? And secondly, do you think Frio have any kind of interaction, try to target him, try to let him know anything in any kind of way on the field, or do you think that one just goes through? I I think if I'm at Fremantle, I'm asking people to shoulder arms to it, just because in any sort of conversation around that, you probably end up in just some muddy waters, Okay, especially where it's like people are hot on it, um, and rightly so, by the way. Um, I, I'd probably leave it. What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I think it's just going to be a personality thing, to be honest. It's going to depend on who it is. I think I think he probably comes straight back in, though, right? Oh, yeah, he was yeah. a pretty underrated, important no, part of what they were doing. I think he's a good enough first. player and important enough to come in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Jake, did we get your tip? You taking Freo at home? Yeah, taking Freo reluctantly, but... Um, Don't sound so excited I, about I it, I guess mate. the other way to phrase it is, are you not taking Gold Coast on the road? And I think the answer is, for all yes, of us, correct. yes, Take that's Freo. correct. All right, let's uh, get into a bit of hardball bets. And there's plenty to celebrate because Jacko, you had a win last week, mate. How good. Doesn't happen very often. Thank you, mate. How does it feel? Uh, thrilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't notice until about Monday. And then I went, oh, actually both those teams got up, uh, which was awesome. It's a great feeling. It's nice. I feel like I'm coming in you here should, You should refreshed. try and do that more often. Right? Monkey off the back. Yeah, I will. Um, and obviously... Jake, Robert, for punning advice, you know where I sit as well. Yeah, so, okay. So kick us off this week. What do you want? Hit me up whenever you need. Carlton, I will take in the Friday night game at a nine and a half line against the Cats. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take the Swans at a 12 and a half line in the Sydney Derby. And what's that paying? 361. Okay. I'm taking Carlton as well, just straight up. And Freo, I'm trusting your boys yep. to get it done straight up. And Essendon by three plus goals against West Coast. That's paying 325. Jake, what do you like for your bonus bet? I'm actually going very similar to you, uh, Robbo. I've got like Essendon at the, at the line, 33 and a half, and then Freo head-to-head at $1.41, which is paying $2.67. And remember, chances cash. are you're about to lose for free and confidential support. Visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Jake, Jacko, we'll let you get out of here. Thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, Robbo. And to Thanks, our Robbo. listeners, enjoy your weekend of footy. Chat to you next week.